The Pacific Ocean is pretty big. It's bigger than this ocean, right here. Actually, it's not. It's the same ocean, connected by a channel down that end of the bath. So, to give you an example that won't help you to imagine it at all, if there was a neutron star the same size as the Pacific Ocean, it would weigh tens of thousands of times more than the entire solar system. To give you a slightly better example, if you were to somehow isolate the Pacific Ocean and then open up a portal at the bottom of it, the same size as a door, like one of the doors from Monsters, Inc., and try and drain the ocean through it, it would take well over a million years to drain it. Every now and then, the Pacific Ocean experiences something pretty extreme with its weather. The Incas experienced it as well, and they sacrificed humans to try to stop it, which actually worked. It didn't work. Not even a little bit. It's called El Nino, and when it happens, it affects the whole planet. And it's really interesting because it's been happening increasingly regularly over the last 50 years. Remember February? That was the warmest February on record ever. And not just a little bit warmer, it was significantly warmer. Everybody was sweating. Like, if I hadn't already lied to you about this bath being connected to the Pacific Ocean, I'd try and tell you that it was full of my own sweat from February. And you'd believe me. So, how does the Pacific Ocean behave when things are normal? Most of the time, you've got consistent trade winds and currents that are constantly blowing all of the warm water on the surface from South America across to Indonesia. All the warm water is consistently moving from the east to the west. The warm surface waters in the west evaporate to form vast rain clouds that can support huge rainforests, like the ones that we see in Borneo and the ones that we see in my bath as well. Meanwhile, the cold surface water in the east off the coast of South America allows the cold deep water to rise. And the cold deep water is rich in nutrients. And these nutrients can feed loads of algae, which in turn can feed loads of fish. And so the fishing off the coast of South America is some of the best in the world. But the climate of the world is changing. It's getting a lot warmer. And the most credible argument for that is that we've been putting a lot of greenhouse gas into the atmosphere ourselves. Like, the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere has been a pretty steady, just below 300 parts per million for the past 10,000 years. It hasn't been above 300 parts per million for the last million years. And now, thanks to the last 200 years of burning fossil fuels, it's 400 parts per million. We're so far above what it's been for the last million years. Since this has happened, and since the world is warming, we have to expect the ocean currents to change. This bath is now so full of mud thanks to the rainforest. But we love the rainforest, right? Here in Britain, we're kept warm by the luxuriously toasty Gulf Stream, which comes from our friends in Central America, carrying warm waters towards us. It's also got a trade winds running above it, which makes it much easier to sail from New York to London than sailing from London to New York. The Gulf Stream actually makes our summers a bit sort of wetter and cloudier than they could be, but it gives us really consistent weather, and it stops us from having the bitterly cold winters that most countries as far north as us get hit by. But the Gulf Stream is getting a lot weaker. Why is that? It's because the world is getting so much warmer. And as that happens, Arctic ice is melting and all of that freshwater cold ice flowing south and changing the way that water flows in the ocean is weakening the Gulf Stream and is starting to waver. No one really knows what triggers an El Nino yet. It could be something similar. But what we do know is that when the ocean currents and the trade winds weaken, that warm water moving across from South America to Indonesia stops moving as much. And the warm water starts to settle in the center of the Pacific Ocean instead. And so the vast rain clouds form in the center. And then they wander off in every direction. The Pacific coast of South America is hit by torrential destructive downpours. Meanwhile, you get relative droughts in Indonesia and all those delicious bananas, they stop growing. And meanwhile, in South America, you end up with a lot of hot water on the surface of the Pacific coast, and that hot water creates a thermocline barrier, which blocks the cold, nutrient-rich waters from rising, and so fish stocks plummet. But it doesn't stop there. Remember, the Pacific Ocean is massive, and so the droughts end up spreading to Australia, India, Eastern Africa, Brazil, and you end up getting massive torrential downpours across Western Africa 
and the southern United States is hit with huge storms. And then meanwhile, Japan gets very warm, so does the Philippines, and you get huge snowstorms across North of America. Even the weather in Europe changes on the other side of the world. With El Niños appearing to be happening more frequently, it's really important to understand how they're going to affect the planet. Remember as well that with all this warm water across the surface when they happen, including next to South America, the whole globe gets a lot warmer when El Niños are going on. Most El Niños are followed by little La Niña, which has almost exactly the opposite effects, but on a much smaller scale. Thanks for watching. Deliciously subscribe for more. Thank you.